Welcome to the Style Transfer Jupyter Notebook Overview. My name is Stuart Christie. Style Transfer differs from classification and object detection in a few fundamental ways. All three use an image file as the input, but classification models return an array of confidence levels of all the objects detected in the image. Object detection returns an array with bounding box sizes and locations and an index pointing to a label file for every type of object detected. The style transfer models actually return an image, and the post-processing is simply to rotate the image and scale the RGB values to correct the colour shifts. Each model is trained on a specific style using a specific reference example, or a style. Van Gogh's Starry Night is often used as a reference image. Thereafter, every image that's run through the OpenVINO inference will result in it being converted or styled in the manner of Van Gogh's painting. If the training image was a graphite sketch of a cat, then the resulting output images are converted to a stylized graphite sketch. This instance here, you can see the composition by Piet Mondrian. One other difference between style transfer and other types of models is that changing out a model is required to select a different style. For example, the default model may be making Japanese woodcut images and another model may be converting images to a mosaic style. This is in contrast to object detection, where changing the model may increase or decrease the accuracy. Style transfer is often bundled with other artistic models, such as colorization of black and white images, super resolution scaling, and even image inpainting. These are all part of the OpenVINO model zoo. Let's run through a few examples on the dev cloud before you try converting your own images. From the home page on the dev cloud, simply click on the tutorials and then click on style transfer. This is the style transfer tutorial. This tutorial requires the following prerequisites and all the files are present in the following directory structure. We've got a tutorial style transfer sample.ipynb. That's an interactive Python notebook, this actual Jupyter notebook that you see here. And then we have the model files, these NST VGG 19s. We have a couple of sample files, tubingin.jpg and starrynight.jpg, and then a couple of documentation and PNG files. So we begin by importing all of the Python modules that will be used by the sample code. The OS module is operating system specific and is used for reading and writing files, for example, reading the images. CV2 the OpenCV module is used for capturing an image from a file and for resizing or transposing an image array. Time is the time tracking module and we use that for measuring the inference time. NumPy is an n-dimensional array manipulation module. It's used to convert JPEGs into n-dimensional arrays to match the image to the inference models. You can see the NumPy objects are referenced here by the NP prefix. OpenVINO Inference Engine, we use the IE Network and the IE Core objects from this. And then Matplotlib, we are importing PyPlot as a PLT object, and it's used for displaying output images. The Import As functionality in Python allows us to use the PLT as a shortcut for matplotlib.pylpot, and is really just a convenience to save a bit of typing later. Let's actually run the import cell and the message prints out all Python modules imported successfully. In the next section, the configuration section, we're going to set up some parameters for later use. Here we will create and set the following parameters. model.xml is a path to the XML IR file of the train model that we're using for inference. In this case, we're using the NST VGG19. NST stands for Neural Style Transfer and VGG is the Visual Geometry Group at the University of Oxford. There's a link here to their very deep research paper. Let's have a look at that. The other parameters that we're setting up 
of the model.bin file, or model underscore bin. This is a path to the bin IR file of the train model and is derived from the model.xml. The input path is a path to our input image. We can change this to a URL or to a local file. The device, this is the device we're running the example on. In this case, this is a development server, so we're using the CPU. The mean values, R, G and B, are red, green and blue, and they're constants that are added for post-processing and pre-processing. These values are specified by the model developer. Let's see here for details. Did you notice here on the white paper, the mean values are specified in blue, green and red order, but our program is running red, green and blue. We set all the parameters here only once, except for the input path, which we will change later to point to different images and even a video. Let's run this section. In the next step, we create an inference engine instance and we call it IE. In this next section, we load the network object named net, save the input and out parameters by reading the net.input underscore info and the net.outputs and we print the model image sizes and color channels. There are three colors and the height is 768 and the width is 1024 pixels. The first parameter, n, is often called the batch size. In this model it's set to 1, but in other models you may see 2, 4 or 8 for example, and this means the model supports 2, 4 or 8 images per inference. To prepare the input we first define two functions, load input image and resize input image. Loading uses the OpenCV library call cv2.videocapture to, in this instance, read from a file. And the resize function uses three separate functions, cv2.resize to scale it, transpose to swap the data layout from height, width, color to color height, width, and then it adds a batch number n to this array of pixels to match the model. You can also see here the alias.plt used for displaying the tubing image. Now we're actually going to run the inference. First we'll start a timer, run inference on the in frame, then stop the timer and print the elapsed time. It's about 3.6 seconds. Let's scroll down and process and display the result. Now we define two functions, process results and process and display results. Process results swaps the layout color, height and width to height, width and color, that is from the model output format to a CV2 and matplotlib friendly format. Then it fixes up the color values by adding in the mean red, green and blue values and clips the color ranges from 0 to 255. The second function, process and display results, draws the original image, here called original input image, and then the second call to plt.imshow displays the inference result. I'm going to run that now and then scroll down and you can see the original image of Dubigin and the woodcut inferenced image. Now that you've seen a simple example, it's time for your exercises where we swap out an image using one we've preloaded for you, and then you have to upload an image of your own and convert it. Then we have a small example of how to style a set of images from a video. Let's start with Van Gogh's Starry Night and convert it to woodcut style. We've defined a few functions to make it easier to try different images. Infer image calls the previously defined resize input image. Remember that does the scaling and transposing and adds the batch variable n to the in-frame array. Then it runs the actual inference. Then we have the infer and display image function that fixes up the color values of the output image and then displays the original and the woodcut version. And there you can see the output and the input file. Exercise 2 asks you to run your own image. Because we're using Jupyter Lab, there's an easy way to upload a file. Simply click on the upload arrow in the left panel and browse for a picture to convert. Note that there's an already completed URL that you can simply edit or just overload. 
I'm going to run it. Get a photograph of me and a nice woodcut. Now that we have run individual images, we can move on to video, which is in effect just a sequence of images displayed at a rate that convinces us that we're seeing motion. We therefore need a loop to read frames from a video file, process each frame, write out the stylized version of the frame and continue looping until the end of the file is reached or until we have converted the desired number of frames. In this example, we are again using OpenCV to capture the image and we are also using a frame count property of the captured image to determine when to stop by comparing it to a variable max frame num that we have set to 6. That is, we are just going to convert 6 frames. Remember, it takes around 3.6 seconds per frame and this example video clip has 3000 frames. It's counting up to 200, that's our starting frame, and then it's inferencing. We're out of time, we should stop at 206. As you can see, it's taking about three seconds to do each frame. There we go, and we have our little video. In this instance, we're just showing you a clip from it. Exercise four is to run your own video. You can upload the video like you uploaded the single image, or you can use one of our example videos that are available on GitHub. Thanks for watching this video. Now it's your turn to log on to the DevCloud and run these examples yourself.